Um, and one of the things you were quite committed to was coming to install them and, and have this sort of intuitive relationship to the gallery and, and allow these objects to kind of be um, responsive to that. And now you're A, having to let go of that, but B, also sort of trying to project yourself into the future <laughs> um, yeah. and into the space from afar. This tape here is the entrance to the Nina Johnson gallery. <laughs> So if I stand right here, this is the um, the distance to your back wall. So, you know, it's not clear to me that this is um, what it'll look like at all. But yeah, it's true that, you know, this work is very much contingent on this, the space. And I think that something I've always liked about um, Saul LeWitt was the kind of like dynamic nature of those works and how it has a different iteration in different spaces. Um, the spacing of the of the objects and also they're in the same way that the grid painting colors inform the like adjacent color, the squares in the grid uh, inform the adjacent colors in the other squares, the same way that this happens to be like almost like a floor painting um, and that these spheres, when I when I'm placing them, they tend to inform uh, the subsequent placement of the other of the other spheres. So the, you know, they all have different qualities and colors. And, you know, this is, this is dirt from the backyard. Um, these are some flowers that we got on a trip that we took. Um, here we have, uh, I pulled out a couple, these are some eggshells, some eggs that we've been eating. Great. These are some cigarettes that somebody was smoking. I love this one because it just, that that to me is it's like the Philip Gustin sphere. <laughs> I don't know this one. I should look this one up. I've been you know I've been doing a lot of sphere like there's a lot of spheres in art history and I've been really interested in Walter De Maria's spheres and um, I'm trying to remember. Oh, James Lee Byers, who's from Detroit. He uh, he worked with spheres, but you know, and those spheres were always made out of like really nice materials, yeah. um, like like perfectly rendered blown glass, or in the case of James Lee Byers, or in Walter De Maria's was made out of like solid stainless steel or something. I can't remember. Yeah, mm. yeah. I mean, I think that they these to me feel more. You know, they they feel more closely related to like a um uh like a flexus piece or something you know like here are the instructions and and um here's the result or here are the kind of parameters and and the object comes as a result of the parameters more than um mm -hmm. some like pre-planned object yeah yeah there, there are uh, i mean the if there are parameters, the parameters are that like it's these are everyday consumables or everyday these are things that I've I've been interacting with every day. So some of these things are sourced from walks that we take when we take the dog for a walk. Yeah. Um or you know, there's some old socks in here. Um you know, the the things that we're we're consuming end up in these these spheres. Yeah. Um, I don't think I can zoom in. Oh, I can. Wow. That one's made out of um, sweet potato skins. Amazing. Let's so, take a look, Jonathan, at the two paintings um, a little up close, too, because I think now that we've seen the spheres, it would be great. We sent out this one on the right, the black and white. We, we posted that, and, and people were really curious about it and you had shared some information about the process of this one with us so maybe you can share that with everyone here yeah so i mean i i you know those paintings that i made for the show those are in those are in connecticut and those were all grid paintings so the intention was to work in a to work through the grid and do a like a, a big group of grids and then once the spheres had become kind of a preoccupation, I started to think more about circles. Um, and a friend of mine I was talking to um, 
like a couple weeks ago was telling me about this dung beetle that um, rolls excrement and but uses the Milky Way to navigate at night. And so this little insect is like rolling feces and then in order to like navigate during the during the nighttime we'll use the Milky Way as a sort of like point uh like as a compass or something. Yeah. And there's something really exciting to me about, you know, going back to like I was describing earlier how like molecules are round and the planet is round and the you know that everything is round, that there seemed to be this like exciting thing about this insect that was acknowledging this spherical, you know, um, planetary thing. Um, yeah. And so I don't know, I started making this painting. This was actually a different painting because I didn't want to show paintings that I made last year. So I took all those paintings I made last year that I left in Detroit and started painting over all of them in the same way that like I'm recycling the materials into the spheres and recycling the paintings into new spherical paintings. Um, and I named this one uh, Stel Stellar Nursery because um, that's the nickname for molecular clouds where stars are born. And it just felt like in this gestational moment, um, kind of appropriate to make like this, you know, a, a molecular cloud is basically an in incredibly dense uh, clouds forming of stars um, where, where stars are born. Um, and there was something, and they're usually, I think they occur near black holes. Mm -hmm but I just thought of making this like, so in some ways this is really just an abstract painting of, of like dots, but it for me points very much to like a cosmic fabric as well. Um, and it has a texture to it. Would, would you show it from the side? Yeah, there's all kinds of stuff in this one um, from the previous painting. So there are some collage materials and some t-shirts and let's see, I left a couple of things in it. Um, there's, it's kind of hard to see, but there's some rags that have been painted into. There's a little bird over here. Awesome. There's a bird eating a butterfly. Um, and I left it outside actually, and it got rained on. So then these like weird uh, things happened here and it sort of scared, like Katie and I were like, this kind of looks like coronavirus, but, um, <laughs> It's not intentional. Yeah, no, not a portrait. And not so what is Katie doing? What is, she, what is, so we'll tell everyone also in the past, you know, in the recent past, you're married, you're expecting your first child and you've sort of um, left Detroit and come back to Detroit now. <laughs> yeah, we, um, yeah, like a lot has happened. We just accelerated our lives in like 12 months. Um, Katie's well. I think, she, Katie, are you in this chat room? She might be in the chat room. Um, Maybe. Well, yeah, we're, we're making it through. I mean, I think like all kinds of, it's strange to be, I'm, you know, she could say a lot more about this than, than I can. Oh, there she is. Hey, Katie. Um, Hi, Katie. <laughs> she's upstairs. She's upstairs. We live above the studio. Um, I... I think it's a strange time to, for, for everything, um, no matter what it is that you're doing, but I, I know that it's especially hard right now for uh, everyone who's pregnant or having a baby or having to go to the hospital for any reason right now. So, yeah. sure. um, but we are healthy and that's, that's good. Good. Well, I think, you know, I think we're, we're kind of getting close to our time. I don't know if, um, it, it would be great if you want to share with me some of the um, references that you talked about, the books and the talks, and we can um, post those to our story or however we need to do that to share them sure. with the folks that are here. And um, I want to shout out. Um, yeah, I just want to shout out Ed and who's in the chat because and also Jose, who are my um, who are my own oh, Matt Smoke is here. Hey, Matt. <laughs> These are my um, my my comrades in grad school, and um, 
you know, it's like really hard right now, I think for everybody um, who lost their studios and, you know, and Ed and Jose are both graduating this year. And so it's just like such a strange time. And my cousin, Hannah, Haig, um, <laughs> you know, but, um, you know, I also want to say thanks dad because he packed up the, some of the spheres and sent them out from Connecticut. Um, which he rescued, the, he rescued the spheres for us in the nick of time. Yeah, I mean, I definitely I think it's it's worth mentioning that we're both, you know, so fortunate to be able to move forward with the show, you know, share it digitally, be connected in this way, not only to each other, but to our audiences, you know, all the, the kind of respective audiences from Connecticut and Detroit and Miami and um you know, there's so many people who had their shows just completely canceled or can't move forward. And your show will remain on view through the end of July. So we're also really hoping that at some point in that time frame, people can physically come see the work in person, um, even if it's by appointment. And, and we're just lucky to be able to do that. And I'm thankful to you for kind of letting us all in here. Yeah, this is my first time doing this. Um, it's very strange. And I haven't had a haircut in a long time. <laughs> yeah, we both we both said we're, um, you know, trying to make ourselves as presentable as possible for the internet this morning. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> this afternoon. This, this is the but, first time I put on like a clean shirt in days. Exactly. Exactly. But we'll also, I want to make a point to say that when the show is installed, not only will we be sharing images and catalogs and all of that, but we'll, we'll hop on here again and do a walkthrough um, of the actual show so that we can share the work with people as much as possible. Cool. Hey, Tim. It's fun to be in a chat room. Yeah, I saw Chris Shank on here too. I don't know. And um, Hey, Chris. Chris Shank's my neighbor. And who else was on here? We saw some other, uh, let's see, who else? I don't know, lots of good people. So thank you all so much for joining. And thank you, Jonathan, for taking the time. And please give Katie a big uh, hug from me. I will, I will. All right. Thank you, Nina. Take care. Bye.